colleagues. You bear with me this morning when I was rolling on my sick bed, wondering how I was going to endure the proceedings of the day. I reflected critically on the life of Sarah and I gathered up pieces and the courage to be here just because of the indomitable spirit Sarah has exhibited in the struggle. She has died at the battlefront. I reflected and remembered even when she was sick, Sarah never wavered. You all bear testimony to this. In all our activities, even when she was in a wheelchair, just like you see Maxensi Atachirambre here, she would come and attend and she would stand firm even when she was sick. So I said, much as I'm not feeling well, many of you may not understand what I'm going through, but I had to make it a point to be here to pay tribute to my dear sister here who has departed. If you want to know Sarah, men have spoken so much about her. If she were to write a book, now it's, it's no longer possible. I think she would do, it, it would carry the same title as Kanyahamba's book. Kanyahamba has written so many books. But for me, the best one he has written, The Joy and Blessings of Being Who You Are. I implore of you to read that book. In that book, there is a chapter where Kanyehamba gives a testimony. There was an attack against his personality, the, his character, the way he has carried himself in public life even when he was in the judiciary. And he said, there is a chapter in defense of an aggressive character. He said, that's a natural attribute. That's how I was born. So I'm happy to live the way I was born. I loved that. Sarah lived the way she was born. She was born a fighter. And I'm sure as she lies in that casket, she is happy. She's at peace with her heart that she has fulfilled the mission God bestowed on her. Because we are all meant to serve humanity. And Sarah has done precisely that. I was telling you uh, the way I was struggling briefly about my life as I want to wind up my remarks. I was diagnosed with a bulging disc. Doctor here will tell you the way our backbone is structured. We have those different bones. What I've gone through, I've learned quite a lot. I know all these bones here from number one up to number seven, the cervical bones. And I was told when I was diagnosed, when I went through the MRI, it's that disc lying between C6 and C7, which got that bulge, and it's compressing the nerves, leading to paralysis here, and a lot of pain, what I'm going through. As of now, all I have to do is to use very strong painkillers to be able to stand before you. And the way those pain skillers work, I was told, is to divert the brain from that, having that attention towards the pain. They don't kill the pain. They just divert the, the attention of the brain. I don't know how true it is, doctor. But they also have side effects 
on the internal organs. So when I was in Nairobi, the neurosurgeons told me I have no choice but to have that disturbing disc or the bulging disc to be removed. And the way they explained it, it was so scary to me. They said, you know, let me first go back home reflect on it. So I'm undergoing that process, counseling myself. I've received a lot of counseling and advice. And I thank Dr. Veske is one of them. He has done enough research for me. I'm told they are, there's what they call laser method, robotic method. Then there is one they use the AC something, AC something here, which is done here. So many of these safe methods of operation may not be done here. That is the tragedy we have. And I have to explore ways of securing safer operations from other areas where they are built very strong health care systems. That's the unfortunate bit. So that's what I'm going through. This cervical collar is just meant to help to restrain me from just rotating the neck around lest I will irritate the nerve further. It's not that uh, I enjoy having it. It's not a fashion. So basically, this is what I wanted to explain what I'm going through to tell you the reason why I had to endure all this to come here to pay tribute to Sarah here who has fought a good fight. And for Dr. Kiza Vesje offering a platform to Sarah here to be able to deliver on that mission. To the rest of us, colleagues, comrades, the last message I'm giving you, when we lose a fighter of this caliber, don't take it lightly. It's a very serious matter. Some speakers here have talked about a void, a communication from God about a void. I think it was the only one to here. It's a huge void. Mr. Seven is on a mission to deny us credible leadership. Actually, his main preoccupation, if you didn't know, is to create a leadership crisis in the country so that he survives with his monarchy. And we have to deal with it. We have to contend with that. So credible leaders are very, very few. When you lose one, we have all the reason to mourn, to cry, to shed tears. They are very, very few. I want to stress this point, I'm sorry. Just look at what is happening within the business community right now. Do you know the magnitude of the problem? The economy, the way it's scrambling. Just last this week alone, when we seven created this crisis of taxes, when uh, 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 unconscionable taxes. I don't know whether you read that news, but they have raised the bank rate, the bank rate to 10.25. During COVID, they had lowered it to 6.5. Now the bank rate is in double ticket, double ticket, meaning the cost of doing business is very, very high. The, the interest rate on commercial banker rates is going to rise, to spike, it's going to spiral. I don't know where they studied the economics. I really don't understand. If it has been at 18%, 20%, it's going to be 25%. And many of these business, business the so-called tycoons here, they are all choking on loans. And now, on top of those problems, 
you are bringing unconscionable taxes. The system URA has brought, which they have installed in Chikubo, in Onukuma, and everywhere. Why I'm bringing this issue? These people are looking for leadership from us. The business community, you see there, he has created the confusion between Kasita, between Kata, between who they are fighting amongst themselves, denying the business community leadership. He has created fights within Boda Boda cyclists. They are fighting amongst themselves. Matato operators are fighting amongst themselves. We, the political leaders, FDC, NUPU, DP, we are fighting among. So the, 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 the religious leaders are fighting amongst themselves. So everybody is fighting each other when he's entrenching his leadership. That is the crisis we must deal with. So let's get together. Let's offer leadership. As we mourn Sarah here, we must understand that we have lost one of the formidable pillars we need in this struggle. Let us not lose more. The few who are remaining, let's come together. The vulnerables from other political formations, we sat here on the 16th day of January and we made a proclamation to give hope to Ugandans. The New Year message. Let's carry forward that message that we are going to rally in single file and liberate this country. May the soul of our dear sister Sarah rest in eternal peace. I thank you all.